Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today, as you see in front of you, is the complete 1000% fully backed Kickstarter edition of Resident Evil 3, the board game. You've got the Kickstarter edition. You've got the City of Ruin expansion, the Terrain Pack expansion, the Last Escape expansion, the Retro Pack expansion, Monster Bock, Kickstarter exclusives, the bonus dice, and the extra figure. All of these things were purchased by myself the last time that uh, Resident Evil 3 was up on Kickstarter. So I just wanted to show you everything that we're going to be unboxing over the next course and the next couple of videos. But of course, today we're going to start with the Kickstarter edition of Resident Evil 3, the board game. One thing I always have to preface with all of these uh, things that you purchase through Kickstarter is the fact that you can purchase all these expansions, but if you don't have the core set, you can't play the game. You can't really play the expansions unless the box is something that is, you know, self-supportive and you don't need the core box for it. But in, from my knowledge and all of these expansions you're seeing here, you must have a copy of the, the core board game. So I'm going to move this up a little bit here. And uh, we're going to pull these other boxes off for the time being. And then we're going to get to the main core box, which is in the back there. So we got lots of stuff to unbox and over the next couple of videos for you. It's very, very exciting. And as you know, we uh, currently on Kickstarter, they're finishing up another um, Resident Evil board game. So I should be expecting that in the mail in a couple of weeks. I just got an email from them actually the other day that said that uh, it's in the mail right now. It's going to be heading over this direction. So once we finish this uh, unboxing and all these expansions, you'll see the new Resident Evil game also uh, unboxed on this page. So, we also had, just so you see there, they also have their Raccoon City tiles. So it's the extra tiles. So, once again, thank you for joining me on this adventure. And today we're gonna unbox the Resident Evil board game. So it's Resident Evil 3, the board game, the Kickstarter edition. Again, this is brought to you by SFG and Capcom. Resident Evil 3, the board game. It was an ordinary day, an ordinary day in Raccoon City. And then the outbreak began. Nothing could stop it, nothing. And things would never be the same again. Monsters have overtaken the city. Streets once bustling with life are deathly still. The only sound, the crackle of fire and the undead groans. Occasionally a scream breaks the silence as a survivor is found and cornered, quickly quieted as teeth bite into the victim's flesh and the light leaves their eyes. There isn't going to be any rescue. If you want to survive, it's up to you. There is a cable car ahead, which you can use to move through the most dangerous areas and escape to the city outskirts, but it's broken down. Somewhere, there, somewhere out there are parts to repair it, if you dare to risk your life in search of them. Bid farewell to your life. Bid farewell to your home. Raccoon City had no chance, but now you have yours. This is your last chance. This is your last escape. Again, as you see down here, it says right there, Resident 3, the board game. Uh, it's the Kickstarter edition, and it's brand, brand spanking new. This came out in um, 2020. It's nine, it takes about 90 to 120 minutes to play the game. It's for ages 14 up, and you need one to four players. Again, brought to you by Capcom and S. FG, which is Steam Forge, uh, Steam Forged Games. All right. So, as a wise man once said, let us crack this bad boy open and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. Uh oh. So again, this is the one I was just talking about. That's the other Kickstarter that's going to be coming out. I'll be getting that in the mail very soon. We'll be doing an unboxing for that one too. But uh, that's going to be pretty fantastic. I wonder how many more of these they're going to do. Because I think there was, what, five movies? Six movies that they put out? I forget exactly at this point. So I don't know if they're going to be doing all the movies or not. I'm not sure exactly. Or if they're doing it just on the based on the video games. I'm not quite sure. So anyway, there you got. This is what's inside the box. So we're going to move this to the side and start unpacking it. And find that rule book to start off with. So we got lots and lots of figures here. 
got lots and lots and lots of cards. Got all kinds of tokens and dice and even more figures and even more cards. And at the bottom of the box here, we have a whole bunch of stuff. We've got a scenario booklet. We've got the rule book. It says, at this sheet here too, which is pretty cool, it says, this game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. Well, if you haven't seen any of the uh, Resident Evil movies or never played the video games, um, yeah, this game may not be for you. And what we got in the back of this thing, let's take a look at this thing first. Ah, there's the railway line, and then we got like a little map here. St. Michael's Clock Tower, Raccoon City Police Department, Commercial, Uptown, Downtown. So you got, they got the Clock Tower, you got RPD, two, three, Commercial One, Uptown One, Downtown, 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 Uptown, Uptown, Commercial Two, and Commercial Three. Okay, so we got a little map on the back of that one. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's a little different. And then again, we have our wonderful, wonderful game tiles as well, and our handy dandy punch out sheets as well. So, and another thing I'm going to show you, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. So, I just want to make sure to show you this too. Um, so, somewhere on here, I'm assuming. So, if you look around the wraparound of the box, which is pretty cool. It's all the names of the people who backed the Kickstarter. And my name is on there somewhere. I really haven't looked for it, to be honest with you. Uh, I did the full, the whole shebang, as they say. So I, I put a lot of money into this. I forget what the cost was, 250, 300, I, I don't know what it was. But it really doesn't matter. Um, but again, I think it's always nice when uh, you, you back a game and all of a sudden they give you a little bit of credit by putting your name on the box. I think that's cool. It's just a little extra added, uh, added thing for those who decide to make the investment. So I think that's pretty cool that they do that. And not everybody does. So, you know, again, I think every, all the companies should do that. Anyway, that's just my perspective. So I'm going to throw this up here. That's that little map back there. And again, this is the, uh, asking you if you want to do the support of the next Kickstarter, which I did do as well which we're going to see an unboxing for that shortly. Uh, then let's take a look at, uh, again, we cracked this bad boy open and looked at what kind of goodness we had inside. So now we're going to move on to the rule book. And I'm going to kind of move this camera down just a little bit because it's a little high for us, for me at least. Okay, so let's get started. It says Resident Evil, the board game, the rule book. I got to look in the back. It has a qu quick reference sheet. So that's really cool. I like that right off the bat. So we got our table of contents. We have an introduction here. Gives us a little bit of background about what's going on in Raccoon City. Of course, you got the Umbrella Corporation logo there. Of course, it shows you everything uh, that you get in the box, uh, which we'll be going through step by step with that, obviously. And then, of course, it goes, explains to you what character profiles are, the profile cards, the health track, the inventories. You got some item cards, what they look like. You got some great, great artwork. You got tiles, you got square model limits, you got range, you got line of sight, you got enemy reference cards, you got, again, one of those big uh, diseased dogs. Gameplay, the basics, you got player turns, you got the action phase, you can move, open, close the door, search, trade, use an item or attack. You can move, open, close door, search, trade, use an item again, and attacking explains to you how you do that right there. Again, another fantastic artwork picture of a zombie who's uh, seen better days. Moving on to here, we got the reaction phase. We got base attacks. We show you a couple cards here of Jill Valentine, who's one of the heroes. And I'll see zombie who's one of the baddies. Then it shows you down here, dice rolls, small base, medium base, medium base, or small base, or three bases. Okay. Then we've got an example of fighting, rolling the dice. Out of sequence reactions, performing an attack, performing an action in the same square as an enemy, attacking enemy in the same square. The tension phase, building tension. You got green, amber, and red cards. Longer lasting effects. So you got tension cards. 
So we've got a scenario right off the bat. It says here, introduction scenario, escaping the warehouse. You gotta set up your board. Again, it shows you what tokens you need. It shows you how to set up the boards from the game. Then choosing your characters. There they are right there. Of course, they have some starting weapons or I should say starting equipment. And that's your health track on the other side there. You've got your card decks. You got playing the demo, equidistant targets and rule conflicts. Uh, and then we got another really, really cool, uh, some artwork there, some additional game rules, tiles and encounters, exploring tiles, uh, encounter dice tables, terrain elements. You got doors, you got one way doors, you got archways, you got barricades, you got stairwells, you got walls, you got item boxes, corpses, you got fire, you got explosive barrels. You got characters, you got health track, weapon profiles, re resuscitation and character death, items, rare items, herb items. You got enemy, enemy reference cards, special attacks. You have the city danger level, additional tension card effects losing the campaign. And there you go, you got the death rattle. You have that chart there, which is right there on the table already, which we took a look. We took a look at that already, and then you got this cool little handy dandy map of Raccoon City, from the zoo to West Park to the city hall, uptown, commercial, the police department, downtown, and of course we're here playing the game, setting up, choosing characters, Raccoon City dashboard. You've got choosing a scenario and setting up detention deck, playing a scenario. You've got advanced rules, the end phase, successfully completing a scenario, failing a scenario. So completing a scenario, uh, okay, it doesn't say that. Okay, some birds picking at a dead corpse. All right. And then of course, advancing through the campaign, the city map, the item C deck, campaign progression tokens, whoop, completion tokens and replaying scenarios, getting to the clock tower. And again, we've got more layout of the different parts of the city. Tension deck and running out of time. Ink ribbons and typewriters saving. That's the funniest thing. I remember playing uh, Resident Evil Odyssey, the video game, when it first came out. And the ink ribbon is what you use to save the game. And the typewriter. You need a ribbon to do it on the typewriter. And we got another baddie standing right there. You got a narrative events also. Tells you a little bit of the story about what's going on. Removing cards from the game. And then Nemesis, of course. And then we have bosses. Boss behavior decks and actions. We have Grave Digger. We got powerful attacks. And then there's other play modes. Just like the video games, you can choose what you want to do. Easy, uh, you know, beginner. Easy, you know, the middle rave. And then blow your mind because it's too hard to play. Which I never played that mode. I always played the easy mode on the video games. I never played the more advanced modes. Uh, standalone mode, solo play mode. So it is a solo game if you want to play it that way. That's awesome. And of course, the back page. So you've got rule book, 31 pages of rules. Quick reference sheet on the back, activation order. Again, action phase, move, attack, open, close door, search, trade, use an item. Then you have the reaction phase. You can attack again or move. You have the tension phase, resolve cards from the deck out of sequence reactions, making an attack, making an action in the same square as an enemy, attacking an enemy in the same square. Then you can do evading rolls so you don't get hit. Weapon icons, you got push, damage, rapid fire, and burst. Enemy attack effect icons, damage, push, assault, sweep, unconscious, corpse, fire. And there you have it. So it has all the icons on there that you're gonna need to know for the game. So that's cool, you got a quick reference sheet right on the back of that. So we got that as well. And there is your rule book. Awesome. Then we've got our scenario booklet. So in this one here, you have the introduction scenario, which helps you to kind of get yourself in tune with the rules. And then you have the actual scenario booklet. So if you're gonna do campaign mode, you could do one-off games or you can do the campaign mode. Again, the campaign mode, you're gonna follow the scenario booklet right here. And of course, always you can always create your own uh, adventures as well as the games once you understand the rules.
as well. Contents, again, umbrella uh, icon. Then again, the gameplay. Oh, this guy keeps showing up here. So Nemesis keeps showing up here. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for keeping guard. All right, advancing through the campaign. You got the city map. Item C deck, campaign progression tokens. Again, there's your city map. Keeping track of what's going on. Completion tokens and replaying scenarios, getting to the clock tower. I'll see the clock tower has been mentioned multiple times. So I'm assuming that that's going to be in the final phase, trying to get the clock tower. Setting up, again, some more uh, hideous creatures, but again, some really, really cool artwork. And then we're moving on. Well, let's see what we got here. It says searching in the darkness. You got special rules, encounter dice tables, card decks, item B, and tension deck. So that's going to be scenario brief downtown one, searching in the darkness. So that's your first, it's your first scenario right there. And then it gives you uh, a link as to how to set it up. Again, you got to hold it this way, set it up, and the icons of everything that you're going to need to fill out that the tiles. And then you got your second, again, everything is set up exactly the same way. Your encounter dice tables, your amber tiles, your special rules, card decks, tension deck, all that stuff it tells you that you need. And then you have your map yet again. Moving on to the next is the RPD Courtyard. Again, all this is the same. And there's a photo of, again, how you're going to set up the board. Then we're rolling on to our next scenario, which is exploring the police station. We got this handsome guy over here. Going to tell us how to behave and how to win this scenario. There you go. Again, exploring the police station. And we're going to move forward again. Another expansion. Uh, clearing a path. It's a brief scenario for downtown two. Encountering again, you got the tables, you got the rules, you got this guy here who's seen better days, and then again, the setup of the tiles and everything that you need token wise. Then you have the onslaught. This is a scenario for Uptown 2. Again, it's set up, all the rules are set up the same way, and there's your map again. And then you've got the gas station in Commercial 2. We've got another guy who might be joining the team to help you out there. But is he really? Okay, there's another one here, another map. As we continue to roll on, you have the Siege, which is part of the RPD-2. Again, that's set up the same way. And there's your map tiles and all your icons and everything that you need for that to set up the table the correct way. Protecting the cable car tracks. That's brief downtown three. Again, it's set up the same way. And you got your maps again. Then you have the sales office, which is part of Uptown 3. So again, you're moving all over this map here. Again, you've got your tiles and all the things that you need to have on, the, on your board. Trapped in the press office, Commercial 3. So you're waking, making your way up the map again to that clock tower. Again, your board set up and all the tokens that are required and where they go on the map. Then we have Fleeing Through the Streets, RPD3. And again, your maps. Then you got another scenario. You got Fleeing Through the Streets, continued. All right. So it's Fleeing Through the Streets and more information here. Another setup for that one. And you have the Tram Crash. And this is at the Clock Tower 1. You got now this one here is a little different because it's got a red tile. You got amber tile and yellow tile throughout the rest of them. Now you're adding in a red tile. And here you go. Again, there's the setup of the board and all the tokens that you require on the boards and tells you where to put them all. And then finally, our last mission is Showdown in the Courtyard, taking place at Clock Tower 2. Uh, he is not looking as spiffy as he was in the first picture. And he looks rather irritated at this point. So they have. So that's going to be the final battle, I guess, with him, with the nemesis. And over here, of course, you got in the back of this, you got the campaign tracker, you got the item box, eight maximum, and you got your scenario. So there it is, your scenario is downtown one, uptown one, commercial one, RPD one, and so on and so forth. And you end up at the clock tower. Locked, unlike, compl locked unlocked, completed, item C located, campaign path located. So you can always make a photocopy of that and so that you don't write on the book. It's not recommended that you write on the book. You can, but again, 
for resale purposes, it would not be wise to do so. I can throw this up there too. We got a nice little box here. This is really cool. In the first uh, version of this game, Resident Evil 2, they did not have these. So I'm glad that they add these in. This is cool. You put all your little tokens in here. And that's very, very cool. Right, good thing to have. Excellent. It's empty right now. But once we start popping things, uh, it, everything should fit in there just quite nicely. That's good. I like that. That's very, very cool. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to also show you, we got uh, we got some dice, game-specific dice. Looks like you got one regular D6. So you got a regular D6, so you, has, you have the umbrella uh, icon here for number one, and you got two, three, four, five, six, just regular. There you go, rolling a six, can't go wrong with that. Then you got three blue dice. All three of the dice are identical. So you've got one that looks like this, one that looks like that, one that looks like that, 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 and then that. And then we have one that has three dots. So there you go. And all these dice are again the same. All right. So there you go. Those are your dice right there. And you also have two red die two red dice as well, so they're identical. So again, you have one that looks like that, 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 blank, and that. So there you have it. So you got the one blank. And you got two of these dice that are, that are identical. There you have it. Again, to understand what the, how to use these dice and how, how to understand that icon, that is explained to you in the core rulebook. All right, so I'll move these dice over to here and slide them up in that direction. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We got player boards and we got tokens and we got lots and lots and lots of goodness here. So let's start bringing this stuff through. So let's take, oh, again, not always a fan of the thin cardboard. Uh, again, for the tiles, tiles are nice, well designed. Again, you have to know the red lines, what the red lines mean. Uh, that's all explained in the rule book, of course. That's a cool tile right there. As you can tell, it popped right out. Again, the red lines. Very, very cool. So this looks like it's a lot of city fighting, which is really different than the first game, which is really cool. Again, so it pops right back in, so you know it's good quality. And then we got some fire here. You're gonna put together your dials, and there's your, there's your dial. As a matter of fact, you got these things, you pop those dials out, you put these things into it, so they can rotate. So I don't need to show you those, but we got a bag full of those that go for the dials. And there's one of the dials right there, you can see. And then we got a bunch of stars in different colors. And we got the death's head, who's kind of like a rainbow color there. Let's flip this over real quick. Oh, see, as you can tell, it, it just falls out there. When you have thin cardboard like this, the big tiles always tend to just pop right out and fall out because it, it can't support the weight of it. Doesn't mean it's not a good quality tile. It just simply means that, uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. You got to be careful. With it. Again, it pops right back in. But again, if I shake it, pops right out like I said so just gotta be careful when, when you're taking it out of the box all right there you go there's one tile there you go there's one of the punch outs then we got our game board again on the game boards they have the biohazard symbols and you'll have to look that up to see what those that indicates got a staircase Got an L shape, or as Al Bundy would say, we can't do it because there's only there's no L shape. It's only sevens. Yeah, you got it. You got it sevens. No L's. Yep, you got L shape. You got that here for the piano, like that. You got that warning up there. You can't park in the yellow zone. There's another shot of it on the flip side of these. 
and then you have the orange zone. So you got a yellow zone, you got the orange zone. You may park in the yellow zone on Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can park in the, not park in the yellow, you have to park in the orange zones. Yes. So here we go. Again, very, very cool. Lots of supplies, some desks, some chairs, some hallways. You got all kinds of cool stuff. Got some staircases again. Got those biohazard symbols on them as well. They got a crashed car building there where you can go into. There you go. Again, you got your orange squares there with a hint of red on them. Continue to move forward. And there's another punch out board. We've got a, another one. Again, the tiles are very, very cool. Nicely done. As I said, oh, that's, what that, oh, that's pretty cool, what is that? It looks like locks, okay, there's some locks. Yeah, looks like locks. Again, when they're smaller pieces, they stay comfortably in this, uh, this sized cardboard. When it's the larger pieces, it, that's when they start kind of falling out. Got a police car right there. Again, uh, I know that's what they're going for. You got a manhole cover there, it's locked. Okay, cool. Um, again, it's got that true horror theme to it. So you got a lot of darker colors, you know, some street lights are on, but it's still kind of dark in areas. Um, very cool, really captures the horror theme well. And then we've got another board of tiles. And again, I'm not seeing an inordinate amount of tokens this time, which is a very, very good thing. Sometimes you have more tokens than you choke a horse with. Just, just, sometimes it just, to me, it appears to be just, sometimes just too many. That looks like the typewriter. You got your different letters there. And we're going to flip this around here. Got that. Again, you got your typewriter and your letters. So those letters change from both sides. And here we go, you got a fire hook right there. It says locked. All right, there you have that. And then we have another sheet and this sheet here. All right, so now we have some more dials here of your ammunition. Assault rifle ammo, shotgun, shotgun, grenade launcher, grenade launcher, rising fear. And then you got your shells there and you got your chambers right there. Got some blood tokens. Got your ink ribbon for saving. You got some health tokens. You got, not sure what those are, but you got that. Got some more. It looks, oh, those are doors. I would say those are doors. Yep. Doors or windows, yep. Okay, again, more of these letters. Okay, and then of course you got your health meters. So you got one, two, three, four, it looks like you got five wounds as a character. So that's one of those cool things. So if you see it, it says right on there, it says, fine, caution, danger, danger. You're not doing too well. So over here we got shotgun, we got the assault rifle, we got the grenade launcher. Over here we got magnum, we got handguns, yep, the handguns. Rising fear again. Yeah, if you're fighting those big things and you only got a handgun, it's not necessarily going to do uh, you a lot of help. And then you got your heart tokens. Again, it's this is a maximum of four players. Again, you got some more windows and doors. You got more of that. I'm not sure what that is. That looks like a map icon for keeping track on the map where you are, maybe. You got a key. I got the key. You got some dead bodies. And again, you got your 
keeping track of your health right there, your health monitor. And we'll flip this over. Uh-oh. Not so good, not so good. All right. So here's this as well. Looks like you got, not sure what that is, but you got more dead bodies there. You got a key again. And this is, again, I just flipped it over. Uh, uh, so that's open doors versus closed doors. Yep. Open windows versus closed windows. Got a couple potions. Got your ribbons. Again, you got your blood. And these are, again, those are keep trackers for your handguns. And you would use, we pop those out and you use, make it one of these guys over here. And there's all your tiles. So you got your dice, you got your maps, you got your tiles. Now we're going to roll on to opening up some more of this stuff here. So we also have, excuse the car noises in the back. Right, I live right off of Main Street, so sometimes we hear those things. But it doesn't take away from what we're doing here. Again, again, this, again we're talking about the core box set. Uh, for uh, Resident Evil 3, the board game. Then we got our mini cards. Got the letter. Let's see, we're going to turn it this way. Looks like we've got the letter S on all these. Oh, we got the S. We got a green light on there. Looks like a green star. It looks like you got some orange stars. It looks red on the screen, but it's actually orange. And it looks like we got a lot of those. So let's take a look at these one at a time. And we have another deck over here of mini cards as well. So we'll pop that open at the same time too. So we can put them all, kind of put them all together. Again, we always open that up off camera. This way, I do cut myself. I don't make a fool of myself in front of the camera. Okay, we got some more of those orange ones. Yep, and they have the letter B on them. Okay, so we got some more orange ones. Then we got some blue ones. Got some blue stars. And then we've got some... All right. All right, so these are counters for your... We'll start with these since I just happen to have them in my hand. Um, put that down there. So I'll see this is unlocked downtown... Unlock downtown, locked downtown, unlock downtown, we got unlocked uptown. So you would throw these on the map. Yep. Uptown. Well, unlocked. Locked. So it just kind of keeps track of where you're at. Locked uh, commercial two. Unlocked commercial two. Locked commercial three. Unlocked commercial three. You're locked RPD one. And you're unlocked. Again, your RPD2, unlocked, locked, and locked RPD3, and unlocked. I don't see anything that says clock tower, but let's find out. Something else happens. So we've got these cards over here. Throw them over there. We've got some of the boutique key, the stars key. we got an old key. we got a simple lock, pad lock, and a winder key. So you need to find these different keys. You got the back door key, the bezel key, future compass, gas station shutter, city hall gate, one way door, one way door, and spare key. So some of these cards are front and back are different. Again, I'm assuming in the rules when you're looking at the scenario book, it'll tell you which cards, which side of the cards you're looking for. So put that over here, and then let's take a look. We got the regular. White star. Okay, got a white star with an S on it. A couple cards like that. All right, cool. We got handguns. Uh, I'm assuming S stands for starting equipment. I'm assuming that. So you got your handgun. First aid spray. It says heal this character or another character in the same or adjacent square by three levels or resuscitate an unconscious character to caution. Okay, it's helpful. Handgun bullets, it says here, increase the character's handgun or eagle 6.0 ammunition dial by eight points. I like the fact that you have to keep, it's not like Zomicide where you just keep, you have an unlimited amount of ammo. This one here, you have to keep track and make sure that you're being careful because you run out of ammo fighting these big guys. Well, 
things don't turn out so well for your character. All right, you got your knife, 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 and kniff. So one thing you have to remember is that when you go into your main rule book, you have to look at all these icons. It will explain to you how to read all these different icons and what they mean and when to use them and all that stuff like that. So those are your equipment cards. That's your starting deck. Then we got green. It says C. I got some first aid spray, precinct key, battery, lighter, first aid kit, stars ID card, square crank, machine oil, bolt cutters, fuse, power cable, oil additive. It could be different zones you're in. Let me just see here real quick. We look at these cards again. Do we have yellow? Like a pink? No. Okay, maybe not. And they also said the warning levels are different different warning levels for different colors. So it may mean that as well. So but again, the scenario books will tell you which cards you pull out, which cards you use. It'll it'll everything will be explained to you and what the difference in the colors will be explained to you as well. Again, these are all the orange cards. And we've got ourselves here shotgun, salt rifle, grenade launcher, eagle, western custom, magnum. Eco 6.0 parts, spare keys, boutique key, lockpick, lighter fluid, old key, stars key, sapphire, emerald, scrap of paper, rusted hex crank, fire hook, uh, future compass, book of wisdom, backdoor key, bezel key, silver gear, gold gear, winder key, toolbox, toolbox, Western Custom M37 parts, okay, fire hose, first aid spray, 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 and first aid spray. Maybe when you get to this level here, you're going to need a lot more help. So there you go, you got the red ones, and then of course you've got the blue, the blue cards. So, okay, first aid spray, green herb. It's not herb, it's herb, ladies and gentlemen. Herb, green herbs, more green herbs. Red herb. All right, so it says, and we know what the first aid spray is. We already read that one. You spray it on you or a friend and you help them get healthier. Let's see what the green herb says. Heal this character or another character in the same or an adjacent square by one level. Okay. Let's see what the red says. This card, when using a green herb to heal green herb to heal two additional levels. I should say red herb, not green. That's a typo. Ink reel, handgun bullets. Remember in this game here, as you can tell, you have your, you have your, you have your uh, handgun ammo wheel. So with this thing here, you gotta keep track. It's a tracker. It's gotta keep, you gotta remember, you need to find ammo. You can't just keep running around, shoot, 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 like Zombicide here. Run out of ammo, you're out of ammo. You have your gunpowder, A. Gunpowder, B. C. Grenade rounds. Shotgun shells. Magnum bullets. And assault rifle bullets. So those are all of your... I hate to say it. Those are all of your... Different kinds of mini cards so we'll put them over there and what i'm liking so far what i'm seeing in this game so far is that it does not have an overabundance of like 42 different decks of cards and i so far i really like that um it's a change of pace a lot of games have a lot a lot of cards for a lot of different purposes and you know sometimes it's overkill it gets too confusing. Well, what card do you use and what's it for and this, that, and the other thing, you know? But this game here looks like there's not that many cards, which is really cool. This deck here, you got all kinds of doorways. And that says here, the board game. So you got some of these guys. And then you got some of these guys with the umbrella. Then you got Nemesis cards. Then you've got Grave Digger cards. So these are some of your baddies, your bad guys decks. All right. So let's take a look at each of these. So let's start off with uh, the title of the game. Again, Resident Evil 3, the board game. So let's see what these are. Aha! 
These are your main character cards. So you could be Jill Valentine, Nikolai Gino Val, oh, Nikolai Gino Baff, Baff, Carlos Oliveira, and Mikhail Victor or Michael Victor. So here we go. So let's take a look at. It. All right, it tells you all of your icons again. This is all explained to you. What her starting weapons are. Reposition. If Jill rolls a that thing when performing an attack, after the attack is resolved, she may be placed in an adjacent square. Oh, okay. Okay, so when I rolled that one over there, she could move to another square to the side. Okay. Last escape. The first time Jill becomes unconscious during a scenario, place her health track on danger. Instead, then place her in an adjacent square. Okay, so all the cards are set up the same way. You've got the ID badge up there, their stats up here what their starting weapon is, and a little bit of background about their special powers. And the same thing for him, and him, and him. So you have one female and three males that you can be in the game so far. So those, those cards. Um, then we have these that look like a guy. Looks like the nemesis character. Looks like he's holding somebody. But it looks like he's uh, almost like a dream sequence on there. So let's see what these do. This says here, out of sight, ominous footsteps sound close by. Your pursuer hasn't seen you yet. Sneak away if you get a choice of what you're going to do. Sneak away, increase the city danger levels by three, or confront the monster. Spawn Nemesis Stage 1 on this tile. All right. So this might be your Nemesis deck. Yep, this is your Nemesis deck. Yep, okay. So if you look at the top right, yep. Got the nemesis character. So looks like part of these. Yep. All right, so these right here are deal with him. So it's out of sight. So again, it's a sneak away, increase danger by low. You make a choice which one you want to do. Confront the monster, spawn nemesis stage one on this tile. On the closest if a character kills nemesis, their player immediately draws a card from the item A deck, then reduces its city danger level by one. Okay. Then you got ver uh, Verlant Mutation, Rocket Strike, Stars, Ambushed. All right, so that's cards for him. Let's see what this says here. Shortcut. Bloodstained steps descend into the sewers, quickly lost to Sinister Darkness. So you get to choose, make a choice. Rotting Flesh, Wounded Survivor, Screams Ahead, Forewarned, Explosion, Trapped Horde, Jammed Cartridge, and of course, Supply Cash. So again, these look like different kinds of event cards while fighting the nemesis. Okay. So again, you got that card there. You got, I'm going to throw some of these up here. So you got this kind of deck. You got that kind of deck. Then, of course, we have our doors. Anyone who's played a video game, you know, when you're moving from one section to another, you used in the first, especially in the first game, uh, you walk through the door while you're at a cutscene. All clear. All clear, all clear, all clear, all clear. Okay, that's good to hear. Then we have our, uh-oh, Umbrella Corporation cards, which all are bloodstained. So let's see what this is. Ah, these are your baddie cards. So you got your zombie. Again, all the icons are explained in the uh, core rulebook. You got a disease zombie. Who has ruptured fresh, a flesh. Brain Demos, he's a wall crawler. Zombie Dog, Predatory Instinct. Nemesis Stage 1. Nemesis Stage 1. Nemesis Stage 1. Ah, I'm assuming these cards are for the different levels that you choose to play on the game. Then you have Nemesis Stage 1 Special Rules card. Resilient, the enemy cannot suffer this kind of effect. Relentless Pursuit, if a tension card with a star effect box symbol is drawn and this enemy is not on the same tile as the character place this enemy on the same tile as the active character on the closest variable when nemesis stage one spawns use a reference card that matches the current city danger level ah okay yeah so those are your danger levels that you have there so that's why you got three of those cards Did that explained it right there beautiful okay that's those cards that down here then you have so 
stage nemesis stage two cards. This is where he was getting mighty, mighty upset. So subject nemesis stage two. Let's see. All right. Okay, this gives you the background information. Says, Vengeance. If nemesis stage two suffers three or more damage from an attack, immediately resolve the actions on the charge reference card. Deadly Pursuit, after resolving a behavior card where Nemesis Stage 2 wasn't able to attack, immediately resolve the actions on their charge reference, the change reference card. Again, it looks like maybe he has two attacks and he has 30 wounds. That's a strong character right there, ladies and gentlemen. And there you got a picture of him right up there. All right, so again, he can move, and then these icons are explained in the core rulebook. So that's one's charge, impale, knock down, knock down. Viral Spike, Tentacle Leash, oh, Tentacle Lash, Tentacle Lash, Wild Fury, Flurry, and Wild Flurry. So you can hit attack, move, then attack again. Or maybe you're making a choice as to which one you want to do. So there you go. Those are your Nemesis Stage 2 cards. And last but not least, we have these here, which is the Grave Digger. It's the Grave Digger. All right, here we go. The subject, it says, Burrow, after resolving a behavior card where the Gravedigger was unable to attack, immediately resolve the for, from below reference card. Okay, and again, 30 wounds. Okay. Gravedigger is a great band out of Germany. If you haven't heard of them, check them out. Uh, from below, again, this is his attack deck. So again, there's information here, and then he tells you what you can do. From the depths, from the depth, uh, from below, from the depths, from the depths, lash out, lash out, snapping teeth, snapping teeth, vicious bite, and vicious bite. And that's that deck of cards. But lo and behold, we have another one. Not so fast, not so fast. We have more than one deck of cards, and here's some more. And this looks like it is the All these look like they are all doors. Okay. Again, the all clear. Wow, that's a lot of all clear cards, I must say. That's a lot of all clears, including these over here, too. These are all all clears. That's a... Uh, a lot of all clear. I gotta tell you, it's a lot. So it gives you it gives you a real fighting chance there. I like that. All right. Then we have lurching gate. Propelled by some unnatural vigor, your foes lurch forward at an alarming pace, snarling as they bay for blood. During the next player's turn, all enemies move one extra square. This card remains in play for one round. Okay. So this is the villain card, obviously. Uh, deepening paranoia. Deepening paranoia. Sounds outside, cornered, tremor. So you have your orange deck. Looks like you've got your red deck. Again, there's some orange decks here. Got your red deck. So I'm gonna put the oranges together. I'm gonna keep the reds together. And then of course, just shuffle them all up. So let's take a look at the orange first. Uh, it says destructive rage. Again, the sound of an enemy roaring and thrashing around its surroundings reaches your ears. Locate the closest item A token and roll the counter die. If the result is uh, this icon, two or three, remove the token from the tile. If there is no eligible token, discard this card without effect. If there's an enemy model on the same tile, remove the token without rolling. Now you'll notice down here, I'm not sure what it means, but you have different colors. You have a purple, you have a blue, purple, blue, yellow. Again, I'm not quite sure what those mean but it's explained right there in the core rule book. So you got destructive rage, unnatural strength, ransack, something beneath, lost footing, tough hide, dead rising, bloody trail, lurching gate, deepening paranoia, sounds outside, cornered and tremor. Some more of those, throw those right on top of here. And last but not least, you have Vigor Mortis, it says, bloodshot eyes unable to hide their hunger. Your foes snap their teeth and rake feverishly at your skin. Enemies on the same tile as this character immediately perform a reaction. 
enemies on the same tile as other characters immediately perform a reaction. So there you go. Figure Mortis, Death Rattle, Feral Chase, uh, Feral Chase, Murder of Crows, Splintering Wood, Disturbed Nest, Rabid Growl, Zombie Horde, Ignition, Unfolding Machinations, Rising Fear, and Pallid Skin. So that's all those cards over here. So, that's all your cards, tokens, and dice that you need for the game so far. So now we could roll on to take a look at some of the figures that are included here. So we get five of these guys. Let me see if I can get, uh, yep, I'll use this little thing here, just so you can see it a little better, because the red sometimes can be a little tricky to see him with all the stuff in the back. So there you go. It's very, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so you, get, so you get five of them. And you get five zombies that look like this. Again, the figures in this game are a little diminutive. They are smaller than um, their normal 28 to 30 millimeter bases. So these guys are more like 20 millimeter 25s. So if you take a look at a normal base, just using this for example purposes, so you can see the size wise, he's a little smaller. And you can see that the base is a little smaller also. So you just kind of get that general gist of how big the character is. They are very awesome sculpts, but they are a little smaller on the smaller side. And even if you look at a, some people are moving over to just using, using uh, standees, the standee base is a little bigger still. So a tad bit bigger, but again, you can kind of get an idea size-wise where he stands, okay? So I just kind of wanted to show you, of course, that was not included in the previous figure, are not included in this unboxing. Uh, obviously, they're from separate games, but I just want to show you size comparison, for so just so you have an idea. So again, uh, you get five of these guys, and that's those, those are really cool sculpts. I really like those sculpts. So as I said to you real quick, You got the cool game trays right here. And again, you get five of the ones with only uh, one arm. And then you get the five with the guy saying, hey, shake my hand. All right, so you get those figures included in the box. Moving over here. All right. So you also get five female zombies. So ladies, you're not being left out in this game. That's a good thing. So, how you doing, miss? Get five of those. Going out in the town, your mini skirt. You've seen better days, but at the same time, it's a great looking figure. She has a great figure. Oh, okay, later. So that's that's corny. All right, we got we got five of those. We've got our dogs. Got your zombie dogs. Those running around hunting. So you get two of them that look like this. And you get two that look like this. With a little more spike sound lunging at you. Almost looking like they're gonna walk towards you. So you got two and two. Get a nice detail, you prime them up, and boom. Do a little dry brushing, they're ready for action. There you go. So you got a total of four dogs, two of each sculpt. And then we got this guy here who's crawling along the floor, it looks like. Looks like a nasty bug. Another not so happy camper. Face looks almost human, which is cool. I like that. That's a cool little touch on that figure. Definitely cool. So you get one of him. 
and you get one of this guy here. So you basically, it's the same creature. You get one crawling and one walking. So that's cool. Again, it almost has, has a bug looking face, but again, it looks almost human when you kind of stare at it. So there you go. This, I got one, this guy. Now also you have, again, you have four heroes that you play. And I like the, how these guys look. There you go with the blood splatter on them. That's one of your characters. Looks like they're almost inked already. So for me, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even paint this guy because he looks he looks cool just the way he is. I don't I have no need to paint them. Very cool. That's one of your heroes, and you only get one of them. You get one of her. Awesome. Again, I wouldn't paint that one. And then you got this gentleman here. Again, really nice sculpt. Really nice. And last but not least, you also have this gentleman here. Now, I'm not sure if he's wearing a mask. We'd have to look at it. We'd have to look at the card to see if he has a mask on or not. Because the expression on his face is not, uh, the eyes you see fine, the nose you see, but the mouth is kind of. So I'm not sure if he's wearing a mask or if he's wearing, uh, you know, one of those face shields. Or if it's just, you know, you can't tell with the camera. Again, either way, it's a really, really cool, really, really cool sculpt. I really like him. He's got the medi kit on the back. All right, cool. So those are your four characters. So I'll pull that up again so you can just see that real quick. Again, one of each of those sculpts. Again, you get one, you get two of the dogs of this kind, you get two of that kind, which are the lunging ones. You get the five female zombies, and you get your four heroes right there. Put that down and put that over here. And you get the cool tray to keep them into, which I really like the trays. Really digging the trays. Again, I'll just take take through this real again real quick. I'll just take that off again real quick. What I did with this one. There are your five zombies with the one arm. And there are your five zombies with the guy saying, Hey, how you doing today? Shaking your hand. Looks like you just he's buff. He looks like you just got out of the gym. So there you go. So you get two trays of figures. Which is always cool. And then last but not least, you get a couple other figures as well you get this guy that looks like a nemesis who is getting stronger and more agitated so a different stage might be stage two if we look at this card yep it says nemesis stage two yep that's what it looks like Well, you say, well, you know, if you have a stage two figure, which is really, really cool. I really like that one. Well, where's the stage one figure? I'm glad you asked. With his rocket launcher. There he is. Very cool figure. Really great. Okay, and there's his stage one, which was back here. No, the blue card, which was kind of like a stage one, it seemed to me. And then we have this bug as well. We have the grave digger. Looks like some bricks on the ground there, like it broke through a wall or something. And you got the big grave digger right there. Which again is a really cool looking worm. It looks very similar to the worms that you would find in uh, that you would find in Alone, the Kickstarter, and Right Busters as well. We have a couple that look just like this, so it's really really cool. But again, really really nice. And so, 
and also you get this cool again this cool little inside the box so you can put all your cards in here you know, put some other stuff in here uh, it's a it's good looking it's a good looking uh, tray for inside much better than the one that they had in the uh, regular edition of the, of the Resident Evil 2 game. So it's a lot better than that. So I really like that tray as well. So anyway, this is everything that's included. And this concludes our unboxing of Resident Evil, the board game. It's not Resident Evil. It's Resident Evil 3, the board game. And this was the Kickstarter edition. And I'm trying to get all everything in there. Okay, I'll just put the Kickstarter edition there so we know what it is. Again, thank you so much for joining us for this unboxing video. It's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Of course, you can always hit that subscribe button. This way you can keep up to date as to when we're releasing any new content to the page. As always, thank you so much for joining us for this unboxing video. It's truly appreciated. So enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe, be well, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.